So you're struggling with CPU overload on Logic Pro X. I used to struggle with this, but now with a few tips you can help to make your workflow better. Let's dive in. So we're going to go into Logic Pro, obviously. We're going to go to Preferences and Audio. Now first of all, you've got to make sure that Advanced Settings, you've got Show Advanced Tools on, as well as Audio and Advanced Editing, just so that you can see all the options that I have. Now we're going to go back to Audio here, and you'll see all my options. Now we'll go through a few of these that are the main key areas with CPU overloading. The main one is I.O. buffer size. Now if I click on it here, you can see that I've got six options uh, from 32 to 1024. I have it set on 512 right now, and that's why I always have it set on, no matter what I'm doing. So the buffer size will normally be set on 128 when you first see it, and that's generally fine for a few tracks. And it depends on how powerful your Mac is. I generally use Serum or Massive, some synth softwares that just seem to sap the CPU power. Now, I've had to move it to 512 to be able to consistently have a lot of tracks, be able to play it, as well as be able to record it on my MIDI keyboard. Now, what this also means is that there's a slight delay with what I'm playing in, and if you were to switch it to 1024, you'd have an even bigger delay. I believe you can actually uh, train yourself to be able to play with this delay, but that is the only sort of con to changing your buffer size. Um, if you were to have it on 32, then you'd be really struggling sort of straight away, especially if you're using Serum or those bigger software instruments that uh, that sap the CPU overload. I'm going to move down to processing threads. Now you can see it's set on four. If I click on it, I've only got three options. Now this really depends on your CPU and how many cores are in your CPU. As I've only got four cores, I can only use four or two, or automatic, but that's another thing. So obviously I've got it set on four. What this means is it's using all four cores of my CPU to run the software. If I had it set on automatic, it would try and switch between the two and probably just wouldn't be as efficient as just having all four going. Now, as I don't run anything else alongside Logic, that's perfect. But if you have something else running, especially if it's CPU heavy, then having all cores be used by one program isn't going to be fantastic. Uh, but it really depends on the other program and if it's as CPU heavy. Now the process buffer range is similar to buffer size in terms of the options and what happens depending on which ones you choose. I've got my process buffer range on large, that means my CPU is less likely to overload than if it was set on small. The issue is I get more delay because of this. If it was set on small, the opposite. Now this is just like buffer size. If you've got a smaller buffer size or a smaller buffer range, you're more likely to overload your CPU, but there's less delay. Now the last thing I'll quickly look at is multi-threading. Now this is between two options, playback tracks and playback and live tracks. What multi-threading is, is basically using all the cores efficiently together rather than just using one core. If I was to click on CPU up here in the uh, at the top of the screen, you can see I've got audio and disk IO. Audio, you can see there's four separate bars. If you've got more cores, you're gonna have more bars. But basically multi-threading means it's gonna use as many cores as it can to spread the weight, spread the load of the CPU. And so if I've got it set on playback, it's only going to spread the load if it's on playback, but if I've got it playback and live, it means it's going to try and spread it all across. Playback and live tracks is probably a better situation if you've got a uh, more up-to-date computer and actually have more cores. Otherwise, if it's slightly older, then playback tracks is probably your best bet. Now, if we come out of preferences, if you've got an issue with having your buffer size at 512 or 1000 and you're getting a delay and you've got a singer or an audio uh, recording that needs to be done, you can always go into record and low latency mode. This turns off all your non-essential plugins like reverbs and things like that so that there is low latency even with the buffer size being uh, quite large. And once you're done with the recording, you can just turn that off and then it will be back to normal. Now on the actual timeline, there are a few things that you can do to spread the load on your CPU and therefore not incur as many CPU overloads. And what you do is you right click on any track and you go down to track header components. And there are a few things that I can talk about. We've got on and off, I'll turn on there, you can see that there. And you've also got freeze. Now I used to use freeze quite a lot, but it also causes a few issues as well. It's a bit annoying, but we'll get into that in just a little bit. 
So the first thing is power on and off. You may have a, a few tracks that you don't actually use, that maybe they're muted at the point and you think, oh, they're muted, it's fine. They won't incur any issues. Not the case. If you watch the CPU bar at the top of the screen while playing your track, you'll see that the CPU still goes up a little bit when that muted track is technically playing, even though you can't hear it. My fix around this is having the on and off button on the tracks. So what you do is you turn it off. Basically, when it's on blue, it's on. When it's grey, it's off. Basically, it does the same thing as muting. You can't hear it and you can just turn it on and off, no problem. Uh, but it just means it's not actually going to be processed by the CPU at all. So that's one fix and that's quite a good fix, I would say, for CPU overloading. If you've got a lot of tracks that you're not actually using at the time and you don't want to delete them. Now the other thing is freezing a track. What this does is it takes a snapshot of your MIDI regions in that track with the plugins and everything on it and it means you can just play that back. It's almost like bouncing it down into audio but it's still MIDI. Um, this has a few pros and cons and it's kind of the reason why I don't use it anymore is it's great for when you're close to the end of a project and you don't think you're ever going to edit it again and you are incurring a lot of CPU overloads. Then you can use it and you don't, if you, especially if you don't want to actually bounce down to audio. The issue with it though is if you want to edit it again you've got to unfreeze it and then that takes a little bit of time and it takes time to freeze it just like bouncing down some audio it takes time to actually scroll through so if you want to freeze a lot of tracks it's going to take a while to actually go through and freeze them all just to then want to edit another one again and then you've got to do the same thing so it's it's a bit annoying much rather turn it on and off if you if you're not planning on listening to it or you can increase the buffer size especially near the mixing stage where you're not actually going to be recording anything so the delay doesn't matter um, and then it's it's a lot better so there you have it there are my top tips for stopping cpu overloading in logic pro x <laughs>